Hello, hi everybody, I'm Thekla Petridou, a Greek Cypriot psychologist, author and YouTuber, and this is our weekly video in English. Today's subject is about revenge porn. What is revenge porn? What are the causes for revenge porn to happen and how we deal with it once we become the victims of revenge porn? What is revenge porn? Revenge porn is a very modern crime, type of crime. It's a crime that happens usually between two ex-partners. The victims of, a, of a revenge porn are usually women, even though there are cases that victims of revenge porn are men, but in most cases the victims are women. And what usually happens is that some people are intimate, they might have a sexual relationship, they might have a romantic relationship, or they, may, or they might even have a one-time encounter, And without taking permission of the other person, the first person, the perpetrator, uh, publishes online intimate photographs, videos, and screenshots of uh, texting, which usually is sexting. This is one um, corrupted way of taking revenge when somebody is not interested in you, on when somebody no longer wishes to be with you, or at some times revenge porn is used in order to extort for money. Uh, what is the first thing you do if you are a victim? If you are a victim of, of uh, revenge porn, if it has come to your, um, uh, if you have found out that someone without your permission has posted online your private and intimate photographs, videos, moments, and texts, you should immediately contact the police and immediately contact the cybercrime department of the police. Immediately. You should not contact the perpetrator. You should not contact anybody else, but go straight to the police. In no case, the victim is responsible for revenge porn. Revenge porn is like a psychological rape of our inner soul and our body. And the victim of such rape might feel that they are responsible for it. No, in no case whatsoever, any victim of abuse, any victim of, of rape, any victim of revenge porn can be held responsible for what happened to them. It's merely the responsibility goes to the perpetrator. The perpetrator, the person who posts online intimate pictures, intimate videos, and intimate sexting or texting between him and an ex-partner or just Uh, videos or pictures of an ex-partner is someone who is evil, who is not respecting the privacy of the other person, and is someone who purposely tries to cause pain and take revenge. What is the difference between sexting and revenge porn? Sexting is a common way of communicating sexually and emotionally Uh, between two people that are in a relationship, e e or a romantic relationship or a sexual relationship, and they are not able to be with each other at that moment. Nowadays, with the pandemic going on, many couples are not guaranteeing together and they are not able to meet in person. So they use texting with um, sexual content in order to have an alternative way of uh, having sex with each other. Sexting is a consensual act which happens between two people, two adults, that they respect each other's privacy and they use this content especially for their gratification, sexual and emotional gratification, and do not use it for any other purpose. It's not a crime to sext with your Uh, partner. It's something natural and it's something that is more um, possible to happen nowadays 
because of the circumstances of the pandemic, of the coronavirus and uh, worldwide um, um, people uh, lockdown. We are we spend most of the time in our houses. We are not able to uh, go outside in most of the places worldwide. And so sexting is a way of coming intimately, alternatively with your uh, partner, with your sexual partner. Sexting is not a crime, but if someone uses the content of sexting in order to take revenge on somebody that doesn't that, that no longer doesn't wish to be with them or in order to extort for money from somebody that is a crime school education and especially sexual education can prevent revenge porn we need to educate our children to learn that they nobody has the right to use their personal images and their personal videos in any other way than the way they consent to do it we need to teach consent teach consent to young teenagers and young adults and we need to educate our children about their rights and about how to protect themselves from being the victims of revenge porn i've been doing some reading lately and it seems that there are some signs or red flags that can alert us in case of a new acquaintance of meeting with somebody or relating with somebody who is asking from us um, to send intimate pictures or videos or to to have a cyber um, sexual connection if you don't feel comfortable to show your naked body to another person through the camera please don't do it if the other person is trying to coerce you into doing something that you don't feel comfortable please don't do it at all times when you don't know somebody and it's a new acquaintance of yours and you don't know their motivation and you don't know their true character you should be careful and observe observe how they behave observe the patterns of their behavior trying to persuade you to do something you do not wish it's a very bad sign it's a red flag that you should be alerted to it my general advice on teenagers and young adults and even older adults like mine is that anything you write in a text any picture you send any video you send um, it you should keep in mind that there might be a leakage and this uh, text or this video or this picture might be seen by other people even an accidental leakage so if you take precautions so that you don't expose yourself through content to intimate content that you send to other people then you protect yourself from being exposed but even if you have you have sent your pictures or you have sent your videos to someone you trusted and that person betrayed your trust it's not your fault it's their fault uh, i really and strongly believe that we should educate our children in order not to become victims or perpetrators and these are the most drastic preventive measures we can take as a society is to educate our members in order to respect themselves respect each other and know their rights when a person becomes a victim of revenge porn, it is literally as if this person has been raped. The psychological impact is huge, huge. Uh, they experience a severe trauma. Their personal life and their intimate moments are shared with the world in a way that they haven't chosen. Uh, this psychological trauma can cause post-traumatic stress disorder or complex post-traumatic stress disorder and it should be addressed immediately by a psychologist and psychotherapy. Victims of revenge poor need to have psychological uh, intervention, to have therapy in order to overcome 
the huge trauma that revenge porn causes. I've learned, I've, I've read some articles that suggest that there is some uh, linkage between excessive uh, porn watching and revenge porn. It has found that people who are, um, um, let's say, um, addicted to watching porn are more prone to use revenge porn for their ex-partners. And there are also the case that some people have this fetish to videotape their sexual encounters without people, with other people without their knowing. These things unfortunately do happen and these are uh, unfortunate dangers when meeting with a new partner. It's not our fault if the other person we meet is a perpetrator. It's not our fault if they do not respect us. It's not our fault if they use revenge porn against us. As soon as we realize that we have become the victim of such an action, of such an act, of such a criminal act, we should immediately go to the police, go to the cybercrime uh, investigation department and ask for help by a licensed uh, mental health professional. These things happen. These things are uh, difficult, traumatic, but if we try to address the issue as soon as it happens, we can minimize its, um, its uh, traumatic effects. And most importantly, we can help uh, our mem the members of our society to realize the importance of respecting each other and respecting the need for a free sexual life for every human being. It's not a bad thing to have sex. It's not a bad thing to have sex thing with your partner. It's not a bad thing to be intimate, but it's a really bad thing and it's a criminally bad thing. It's a crime to post online and send to other people pictures, videos, or text that are meant to be for your partner and you only and not anybody else. Uh, I know that this is not a very pleasant subject, but it's a reality and we should address it. As parents, as adults, as society, we should address this new modern type of crime. I wish you the best. See you everybody next Friday at the same time. Bye.